I was in the women's movement as much as I could be still being a journalist. Having moved to documentaries in 1970, um, one of the first ones I did was, call, was about, quote, women's liberation. It was a basic primer on the women's movement because as the women's movement emerged, the men were clueless. They were totally clueless. My colleagues said to me, well, wow, what are you supposed to, you're not supposed to open the door for a woman anymore? Are you supposed to light her cigarette? Like cigarettes, you know, people smoked then. Um, they, I said, no. I said, that's not what it's about. It's about equal pay. It's about getting the good jobs. It's, it's a civil rights story. If you can wrap your head around that, uh, they didn't get it. So I started doing a whole series of documentaries because the man in charge was a doll. He understood. He got it. So I did that? Tom Wolfe. Uh, now deceased, alas. Um, I did one in 72 called The Hand That Rocks the Ballot Box about women uh, demanding uh, equal representation in the political conventions, uh, the formation of the National Women's Political Caucus. Then there was a whole slew for there was a religious show on Sunday called Directions. I did three, one women in the church, women in the temple, women in Catholicism. I did a whole bunch of women's health. I did a lot. Now, I did some other documentaries as well, I, child abuse, other non-women's subjects. Um, but I did do a lot on the women's uh, movement. Then I had was very well connected. I had met Betty Friedan in the 60s um, at one of Lady Bird Johnson's events. Uh, it must have been 67, 68. Uh, her book, The Feminine Mystique, had come out in 63, but I was living it. I was the new emancipated woman. I hadn't had a chance to read it. So it happened when I met her, I, w I was finally reading the book. So we became friends, and we were friends for life. I spoke at her funeral when, at, when she died at 85 this year, 2006. And um, so I had access to a lot of information about what was going on. I knew the people involved, and uh, they would alert me to events. For example, when they had a sit-in at the Ladies' Home Journal, I knew ahead of time. I got there with a crew. So I was reporting on it, and I was, uh, but, but I couldn't be, you know, I couldn't march in a protest or anything like that. I, I had to be somewhat discreet. Certainly it was fairly clear in my documentaries where I stood, but nevertheless, the documentaries, I think, were fair. Did you have to fight at all to get them on? No, I didn't, because of the man in charge. Although Elmer Lauer, good old Elmer, who didn't give me much support when I was having trouble in the newsroom, he used to screen them with Tom Wolfe, and I was never allowed to be in the screenings. And he, uh, he literally didn't get it. Tom always defended whatever I did, presumably, because they were never changed. But he did tell me once that Elmer, after screening the one about politics, this conversation was related to me. Tom said, Elmer said, well, what is this about women wanting power? Don't they have power in the home? I thought, oh my lord. So I wrote Elmer a single-spaced, long, memo trying to explain in as, as uh, uh, non-confrontational as I could be about what it was we wanted. And I said to him at the end, I said, you, you, you think that women want power in the home? I said, we have power in the home. I said, would you trade your place for power in the home? I don't think Elmer ever really liked me very much, to tell you the truth, and I don't know if he ever really got it. He's quite old now. He's in his 90s, and he probably has got it by now. But um, whatever he thought, he didn't interfere. He had his man in charge, and he let him decide whether these documentaries were okay. In terms of the women's documentaries, I don't remember getting hostile mail. Um, I don't remember getting mail much at all about them. Uh, everybody in the women's movement thought they were great. <laughs> I was, you know, big hero, heroine to them. Uh, 
But also there were aspects of the women's movement that didn't like me either because there was a radical women's movement that at one point, some event I was covering, the Congress to Unite Women, they stole some of my footage, a big thousand foot reel we couldn't find when we packed up. And later I found that they had dumped it in the, in the East River uh, because I was working for the enemy and I was a pawn of you know the, the evil networks. <laughs> so this was an outrage. This was just, it made, made my, I, I, I couldn't believe it. And of course, when I got back to ABC with, without that footage and my crew, they were just, they were thunderstruck. <laughs> they couldn't believe it either. When I can remember the, the assignment manager saying, oh yeah, he said, look at your, what your women friends, all your friends out there, great friends you got, stole your film. So, you know, it wasn't all lovey-dovey. We had problems all, from every direction. But basically, it, it was okay. It was not, not a big problem for me.